Hello everybody, welcome back to a brand new video. Today we're doing what if Charles Lindbergh ran in the 1940 election. So if you don't know, Charles Lindbergh, one of the most popular American aviators in American history. The 1940 election. Essentially, you know, if he ran against Franklin Roosevelt and during his third term attempt. So apparently this was a book, a what-if book that someone wrote, but I'm not going to read it because I'm not going to try to copy it. That's stupid. Why would anyone try to copy anything? That's stupid. So we're going to try this out. Uh, so essentially, what if he ran and what if he won? In 1940, we're going to say this. If Charles Lindbergh won, let's say, you know, the uh, Franklin Roosevelt trying to run for a third term thing is very, very, very unpopular. And ends up in Franklin Roosevelt, the landslide master himself, getting landslided. And uh, Republican aviator Charles Lindbergh defeats Democrat President Franklin Roosevelt, 355 to 176, to become the 33rd president. And I want to argue that in this first term, Charles Lindbergh does what the unthinkable. He gets us out of the, um, out of the, out of the Great Depression. We enter World War II a lot earlier. And he also makes it an issue of civil rights among blacks. So that happens about 20 years or in advance, 20, 30 years in advance. So Charles Lindbergh, you know, he starts up that movement that will happen for decades. Uh, 1944, Charles Lindbergh ends up landsliding by a bigger margin, as you know. Very popular, good economy. He defeats Harry Byrd, 392 to 139. Uh, to win re-election. And, you know, people are asking if he'll run for a third term. And then he responds with passing the 22nd Amendment pretty early. Uh, so, limiting the president to two terms. He ends up passing that much early. Going on to the 1948 election, we have uh, Vice President Robert Taft and Secretary of State under the Roosevelt administration, James Burns. Uh, you know, your two guys right there, your two big boys. Uh, Vice President Robert Taft defeats Secretary James Byrne, 275-256, to become the 34th president. A uh, very close, very close election here. As, you know, you know, people are very pot like Lindbergh, but they like Taft, but they also like Burns, especially in the South, because, you know, he's very anti-civil rights. So, you know, that's the whole issue. If you're anti-civil rights, you're going to win in the South. If you're pro-civil rights, you're going to win most of the North. Most of it, not all. Going on to the 1952 election, there is a bad recession, post-war recession, as World War II is over. Excuse me. World War II is over. There's a bad post-war recession in America. So, uh, Robert Taft is not the good guy. So, they nominate Senator Alvin W. Barkley uh, to try to take out Robert Taft. And he does, winning in a landslide, 370 to 161. However, Albin Barkley ends up passing away, so his vice president, Estes Kefauver, has to take over the helms. And, you know, Estes Kefauver, very popular, but the uh, Republicans end up nominating a very popular general, even more popular, Dwight D. Eisenhower, who ends up defeating Estes Kefauver, uh, 299-231, to become the 37th president. So Eisenhower won just because he was a bit more popular than Kefauver was. Uh, going on 1950 or 1960, Dwight D. Eisenhower doesn't end up running for his second term just because of the fact that his health is very bad, in this, uh, just like it was in real life. So Richard Nixon, his vice president, ends up becoming the Republican nominee, and the uh, Democrats nominate the Senate Majority Leader in Lyndon B. Johnson. Uh, Johnson, very popular amongst the South, especially though Nixon, you know, riles up the black vote very much so. Uh, Johnson tried to bring out this, hey, I'm going to give you civil rights. He's lying. But, though Nixon does end up beating Lyndon Johnson 295 to 241 to become the 38th president. Going on to 1964, Nixon is going to go up against anti-civil rights leader George Wallace. And essentially landslides him as he was able, just as in October Supplies, was able to pass an amendment garnering civil rights to the black, to black people, which is great. It's great. Good job, Richard Nixon, this timeline. Also, there's no Watergate in this timeline. There is no Watergate. There's no such thing as Watergate in this timeline, so don't even ask. So, and, you know, Richard Nixon essentially landslides George Walls. Going on to 1968, Ronald Reagan would end up uh, beating Eugene McCarthy barely. Uh, 272 to 66. 
uh, Reagan, you know, very popular Republican, does his best as go, yeah, yeah, impression. You know, very popular Ronald Reagan. is very popular. Uh, and these maps are essentially, our trends are pretty much inverted because you'll start to see the south trending blue and the north trending red when it's supposed to be the opposite. So, yeah, it's going to be a bit different, so <laughs> bear with me. In 1972, uh, Democrats nominate Washington Senator Henry Jackson, who is landslided by Ronald Reagan, as we get eight straight, as we get 16 straight years of great Republican economy, great economy, low taxes, great stuff. Ronald Reagan, pretty much, you know, Nixon, very liberal. Reagan says, "Hey, I'm going to become conservative for a. I'm going to make the Republican Party conservative for a little bit." Thanks. Um, going on to 1976. Uh, Republicans nominate uh, Reagan's vice president, George Romney. That name might sound familiar if you like this channel. And Democrats nominate a very popular New Mexico senator, or excuse me, governor, senator, because Jimmy Carter isn't running. Senator Mo Udall. Um, 1976, uh, Romney defeats Udall and becomes the face of the oil crisis, energy crisis, and the Iranian hostage crisis, as well as a bad recession. Because of 16 years of good economy, a bad recession comes. And who's to the rescue but Arizona Senator Ted Kennedy. Ted Kennedy ends up. Uh, since there is no JFK, the Kennedy dynasty ha is not a thing yet. Kennedy stays. Uh, Massachusetts has two Kennedy senators, Ted Kennedy and John Kennedy. Though John Kennedy might pass away sometime soon, so you never know. Um, Though, and George Romney, you know, ends up running a bad can campaign like he did last time, though he only edged out a victory because he was Reagan's running mate. Uh, and Kennedy ends up beating Romney. I expect him winning the popular vote by eight points or more, and we have a good economy. Uh, the hostages are released the day after Kennedy's inauguration, so they stay there about a day sooner, a day later, because a threat does Kennedy does kind of puts his foot down and says, look, I'll go to war if you guys don't want to cooperate. Going on to the 1984 election, uh, George Bush ends up becoming the, you know, the Republican nominee. He's a senator from Texas in this timeline, so he's, a, you know, he kind of takes Lyndon B. Johnson's seat. Just kidding. I don't know who he replaces. Probably L Lloyd Benson. I don't know. Um, and he ends up not running a good campaign either, so he ends up, he's like lukewarm milk toast. You never know. And, uh, you know, Kennedy beats him. Uh, not by a landslide. Bush ends up, you know, drawing out the traditional Republicans, the Nixon Republicans that are still alive at this point, 20 years down the road. Who knows? Maybe they're in their, maybe they voted 40 and now they're 60. Who knows? They're, they're still there, I'd presume. Uh, you yeah, know, we have eight years of a good economy. Good eight years. It's, it's good. It's good. It's very good. Now we're going to 1988, Jesse Jackson and Pat Robertson. Hey, this is from my last weather video, too. Essentially the same thing, except Jackson, you know, he wins, he defeats Pat Robertson. Very boring candidate Pat Robertson would be. Republicans just can't catch a break. And so, you know, and instead we get a recession, a very bad recession, kind of like with the Reagan-Bush thing. We just get a very bad recession. And, you know, Pat Buchanan ends up becoming the Republican nominee in landslides Jesse Jackson. There is no Ross Perot. Uh, Jackson would introduce NAFTA, and Pat Buchanan was like, no, NAFTA sucks, and Ross Perot would back Buchanan, though uh, Buchanan would not win Texas in this timeline, since it's trending blue. Uh, going on to 1996, you know, essentially Bill Clinton. Pat Buchanan is essentially being Bill Clinton right now. People, you either like him or you hate him. Good economy, at least. Though he barely beats Jimmy Griffin, winning the popular vote by a point or so. Um, doing very well, especially in the Rust Belt. Going on to the 2000 election, Alan Keyes, the vice president, ends up becoming the Republican nominee uh, to try to become the second black president. And Democrats nominate uh, Senator Bill Brady, Bill Bradley, excuse me. As you can see, uh, set, uh, Democrats are still doing well in the South, and they even win Nevada, Arizona, Colorado. So that's an up. But Alan Keyes would defeat Bill Bradley, 275 to 262, to become the 44th president. He'd end up winning the popular vote by a point or so. And yes, before you ask, there is a Keyes versus Bradley in this timeline, and the Supreme Court where Bill Bradley ends up being favored to win the state of Florida, essentially. But it doesn't do much. Going on in 2004, 9-11 uh, does occur, and we do go to the war in Iraq. 
um, which is a very sad state of affairs. As Alan Keyes would end up being um, favored over John Edwards by a lot. As Alan Keyes defeats John Edwards 331 to 206, the Democrats still doing very well in the South, uh, still losing Florida, as well as the Southwest and parts of the Northeast. The Republicans are actually doing better there, especially in the Rust Belt. Going on to 2008, a recession does occur as Bill Richardson becomes the Democrat nominee. John McCain ends up becoming the Republican nominee, you know, very rhino heavy. Uh, the Republican Party ends up going from far right to rhino territory very quickly, if you can't tell. Or liberal Republican territory, very center left, while the uh, Democrat Party are your moderate lefts. Um, don't argue with me, that's how I do things. Eh. And Bill Richardson ends up beating John McCain by a popular vote landslide, winning by seven points, but barely in the Electoral College, 304 to 234. And that's, there you go. You know, Bill Richardson has a, has a better presidency. He pulls out more troops from uh, at, from the Middle East than Barack Obama did. You know, better economy than Barack Obama. Uh, better employment rate, especially. Bill Richardson would just be a better president altogether. And when he runs against Mitt Romney in 2012, he ends up, doesn't do as well in the, uh, Popular vote, no, the Electoral College, because Mitt Romney, people are sick and tired of this Bill Richardson bullshit already, apparently. And Bill Richardson beats Mitt Romney, 290 248. You know, certain states are trending blue, certain states are trending red. You don't know how this map's going to turn out. Going on to the 2016 election, uh, Bernie Sanders ends up becoming the Democrat nominee. There's no Hillary Clinton, so he barely has any sort of competition as there is. It was just Martin O'Malley, so the Democrat Party's starting to take a or left approach rather than moderate traditional leftists. And, you know, the Republican Party is still the center left. There is no center right party. There are some center, the center right people would go to the Republican Party, but it's made, it's, um, the majority of the party are center left individuals. You know, the big players are center left. And so John Kasich ends up becoming the Republican nominee. And he ends up, you know, and he ends up, you know, doing very well. But Bernie Sanders still beats him. Uh, at the end of the day, 310 to 228, uh, you know, there's your map. Going on to the uh, 2020 election, you know, Bernie Sanders, he gets the 15 minimum wage passed. You know, not a lot of socialist policies. There's still no universal health care. There's That's still being worked out, of course. Uh, but uh, that's on the second term agenda. If Sanders wins, that would most likely get passed, but due to COVID... People are pretty much saying we're done with this socialist bullshit um, because there's a bad economy. It's even worse. And Bill Weld ends up becoming the uh, 2020 Denver Republican nominee, very libertarian, very leftist kind of guy. And he uh, beats Bernie Sanders 316 to 222 uh, to become the next president of the United States. So, guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. This is the chaotic one saying peace.